go ahead and call our regular meeting of Parker City Council Board this time. Um, is there anyone to for us? Probably. Okay. Heavenly Father, we come to you and ask that you be here in our presence tonight. We ask that you be with families that have lost loved ones this week in our community. We ask that you help us to make the decisions that would carry out your will for the city and for its citizens. And as always, we thank you for the greatest gift that you have bestowed upon us with your son. Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Seeing no visitors, we'll get right into the minutes of our last meeting. I'll give you a moment or two to look those over and entertain a motion to accept those. Did we go into two closed sessions? Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. I noticed it down here, but I couldn't remember it. Of course, I'm getting old. <laughs> I make a motion that we accept the minutes of the previous meeting. I'll second it. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor of the stand. Thank you. No opposed. So I'm going to carry. Terry, you're next on the agenda here. I think I told you last time regarding uh, the road closures. We had two different people. <coughs> Mary's request, which is over here by Jerry's house, I found that on uh, the alleyway we were discussing, was on a plat for East Hartford City edition. Um, it was unnamed, undeveloped, or at least it's, it's undeveloped now. Maybe at one time it had been developed. But I have prepared written notices, a consent form, and an <coughs> once they go through all that and they decide they want to do that to close that portion of that out of the way. So that's all prepared right here. The other one I haven't found on the city plat a specific designation and acceptance by the city regarding that other alley. I, in my opinion, it was more likely it was <coughs> reserved easement for a landowner. So I don't really see if the city needs to go to that expense. Okay. Uh, if it's not actually a public right of way. The other thing is, you had asked me about my <coughs> original memo concerning the wastewater treatment plant. And I think everybody here, except for maybe Sid and Jody, actually has seen that, or at least knows what the discussion is. Jody, I got one copy here, and we can make another one. <coughs> I can email you however y'all want to. Uh, what's in that memo, though, and what was originally presented? Uh, is based on other audits because that's all we had at the time. <coughs> this past month to get probably some more recent numbers, but my understanding is they still haven't come out with the most recent audit. Well, I wanted to um, talk about this wastewater thing really quickly because um, I got a little better understanding of the wastewater situation as opposed to, which is a little different than what uh, we have been discussing here because. What we're, the, the conversation <coughs> going on here is that the I&I um, is causing us to have kind of an inflated, thank you, inflated um, flow. flow, yes, through the wastewater plant, which we're saying basically, if I'm understanding correctly, um, that we don't think that we should be charged for the I&I because it doesn't cost them as much to treat the rainwater. <coughs> Okay, well, that is not actually true uh, because with wastewater, it's a biological process. And whenever you have increased I&I going into the lines, it kills the bugs that are treating the wastewater. So it, it, it dilutes the, the, the cleansing process of the wastewater. So it actually makes it harder for them to treat the wastewater um, with all the I&I going in. And here's my, my thought on that. If the INI is going into the lines because the lines are ours in the city and they're porous and it's our fault basically that it's an increased INI <coughs> and, and we can't afford to fix that, right? If we don't let them take over the city lines because they can afford to fix it, right? And we can't. That's my understanding. Is that correct? It's more convoluted than that. Yeah. 
It's not quite that simple. Okay. Go ahead. I think a large part of the problem would be the on uh, one of the reasons that we're seeing increase, even though we've put millions towards the sewer repairs, as you tighten up part, portions of the system, it allows more to come in up down the road. Down the road, so you're actually flooding more into the system as you're tightening it up. It's almost like a, a traffic jam, in a mm -hmm. way. And they're, the argument regarding the I and I, what they're treating and what they're not treating, is they're saying, well, we can't we can't differentiate what's rainwater from what's actual waste. And we've had certain individuals tell us actually there are methods where you can pull off a lot of the just basic uh, rainwater and river water that's getting in there and separate it from the waste to be treated. But um, that's not currently how their system is set up to treat it. Right. So regarding the expense on whether they can treat it and fix our I and I and things of that nature, when you do that, uh, based on their past accounting methods, I would suggest that they would not look into using existing funds that they've set aside for capital expansion and would much rather raise rates astronomically to just basically do a Which was fund. the argument before and why we were, we were concerned about that before, right? Yeah. So I, I, I wouldn't, I, I would be very hesitant to look at that as an option just because I, I don't think. So you don't support that option then? <laughs> not, not without contingencies. Okay. Certain. I probably our best bet is to just plug away and trying to do our I and I improvement uh, over a period of time. Just do this area, do that area uh, when we have time. I, I've actually <coughs> been in discussion because I, I talked, I reached out to Mary Bell, one of our, our members yeah. of the board, and she thought sometime in, in March they're supposed to get the most recent audit, but I haven't gotten it from her yet. And that was hoping to have it before tonight's meeting so I could plug it in based upon my original numbers. Um, but they did revote, I think, to apply the discount. Isn't that right? Yeah. So the discount's now being applied, which effectively brings that rate down to about 262 per uh, thousand gallon. My original proposal, based upon about four year old numbers, would have brought the rate down to about two and a quarter. It was at 293 originally. I don't know, based on the newest numbers, you're probably, that probably is creeping up because of the depreciation costs and some other capital expenses. So the 262, getting them to decrease off that amount, probably going to be really difficult as more and more numbers come along. Um, so I reached out to Alan Robinson, who had worked closely with Nick with his plan, and was throwing a couple different ideas at him. Alan, he thinks that, you know, a couple things we need to do is maybe do a complete sewer evaluation of our entire system right now, which actually may have already been done when they originally built the plant. So it may be a lot easier than to go and find that if we can get those, some of those original documentation. And he's even offered to actually come to a council meeting free of charge to sit down, brainstorm, discuss the plan, and see if there's any other aspects. He still likes the idea of the lagoons and thinks that that is one of the more feasible options. Okay. So, so are we going to have him come to council meeting then? If he's not going to charge anything, we have nothing to lift. Yeah, I mean, I think we need to learn as much as we can about this entire thing so that we can make an informed decision about what to do about it. I, I mean, I think I think it's worthwhile getting good, some good questions before him, telling him what we're going to have in advance so he can come ready to discuss the current proposal potential changes to that proposal. He was at the grad meeting with you and Leon, right? Well, um, Leon and there was Alan and myself. Okay. Um, so, I mean, he, he already knows what the battle is facing that challenge. Okay. Um, so, I mean, he's, he's pretty he, he's pretty involved so far with the process. He and Nick communicated pretty regularly. So, did you approach is it Kevin Keith? Which one is it? I attempted to. I, I attempted several times to reach out to Kevin, the uh, the director out there, and I haven't had any luck on that. So I was going to go through Maribel to get some of the more updated reports, and she's she's hopeful at the next meeting that they're going to. And we'll what is the next last name? Nick White, our council member that passed away. Oh, okay, who was it that you were saying would come Alan here? Robinson. Alan Robinson. He's with Eclipse Engineer. From Somerset. <coughs> He's the ones that did our plans that we already have for a new 
sewage treatment plant. But I, I do have a couple of brainstorm things. If we're not being filmed today, are we? Yeah. Are we? Okay. Well, we'll wait then <laughs> on some of that. But until Alan gets here. But uh, that's currently, you know, it's, it's just kind of a brainstorm session on that. And I, I don't know that we want to tip a hat yet. No, I would say not. Okay. Sorry. Anything else? I don't think so. Okay, thank you. Uh, financial reports. <coughs> uh, you have your account balances on paper. I say on paper because they never are what they look like. They're coming in. We've already got two. They're supposed to be open next Thursday. It's a. It's mulling about. Uh, we think it's somewhere around twenty-six acres. And trimming. Around every two. The mowing's not the problem, it's the drinking is right. the problem. Any questions at all about any of the financial statements or account balance? Entertain a motion that we accept the uh, financial statement. Make the motion. All right, second. second to the any questions? Discussion? <coughs> All in favor, up with your hand. Thank you. Motion carries. All right. Um, <coughs> uh, oh, okay. I'm not going to bring the old business that we had to bring before. Well, I do. <coughs> I've got this kind of new business, though. Anybody have any old business to bring up? Anything? Okay, on the new business, uh, one of the things that we discussed last time is, is looking at water rates. Uh, what, what you have are five pages of water rate. And I'll explain things, I'll explain things for you as the RNS said. Uh, the first page, this is looking at our last fiscal year. Um, we had expenses, you see there of $713,426.09. Income of $458,709.90. That meant we had a loss for the year of $254,716.19, which is $21,000 plus a month. That's what we thought it was. So to make it come out even, to take care of that loss, we'd have to raise our rates 55.5%. 55.5%. <coughs> so you see in this next table here, the column of numbers on the left is our current rates. Column on the right is what our rates would have to go to to make us break even. Okay. There's a couple of notes there. Um, I did include the depreciation in our water accounting. I did not include that. We don't put anything into a depreciated account. Aqualine is in there, but it's compensated for in the income and the expenditures. And we had a $35,940 capital outlay, which usually we don't have. It does, in the income aspect of it, it does omit any tap-ons, uh, any fees, penalties, anything. And uh, all the amounts that you see are per 1,000 gallons. Okay. Now, 
go to the next page and you see a typical bill. This is a minimum pay bill, which is what a lot of people in Hartford are. Most of our people are either in the first or second level of pay. Um, up here you see the 18 right here. This person used 18, that's 1,800 gallons. Okay, see at the top where it says 18. Uh, 1,800 gallons, cost of 1874. The sewer surcharge of 1140. The sewer surcharge is uh, $5.70 per thousand gallons. So if you use the minimum, it's going to be 1140 for the minimum $2,000 bill. Sewer inside is 90% of what your water cost is. Okay, so in this case, 90% of $18.74 is $16.97. Garbage is $12. School tax is 3% of the $18.74. Okay, that gives you a bill of $59.57. Now, down here it was calculated. You can see how every, every number was Calculate. Of course, that's what's up here. Now, I did the same thing with the new rates, raising the, the rates 55 and a half percent. That raises the minimum <coughs> bill from 1874 to 2914. Sewer surcharge still going to be the same, still 570 per thousand gallons. Sewer inside is still going to be the same. Now, the way we had to do that was you had to change. So we didn't want to change the sewer charges. We didn't want to change the water bill. So the sewer surcharge, or the sewer inside, went from being 9% of your water bill to being 58% of your water bill. And that gives you the same amount, okay? Garbage the same. School tax went up because your 3% is now 3% of $29 or something. So it gives you a total bill of $70.28. $70 that's going to be everybody's minimum bill that's on minimum pay. That means it went up $10.71 a month. We've got people that come in and complain when it goes over a dollar a month. Yeah. But you've got no depreciation <coughs> built into what? that? You've got no depreciation built into that? No depreciation to calculate in at all. Isn't that why you're the position you're at though? Well, we never did put anything in a depreciation because we never had the money to put in there. <laughs> right? Turtles all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you pay for it after a while, you know. You pay right, we're paying right now to redo the water plant. Um, I will say that was another comment Alan made was about the water plate treatment plant and not exactly being the most cost effective method of providing water in the city. And his idea was purchase it from the county. Yeah. <laughs> it will be a rough force to do now that we've entered into a contract for the next odd years, twenty odd, thirty odd years to what we're talking about is our rate is going to put us well above what the county's water rate is if we do the 55.5%. That's not going to be my, what my recommendation is, but uh, we've got a lot of people that are on fixed incomes, $700 a month, and you start taking $10.71 extra, you know, it's going to put them down real bad. So, what contract are we in that we cannot purchase from the county? Well, we're just re refurbishing our water plant right now. Nothing's been done to it in 25 years since it was built. So, we're entered into a contract on that? Mm -hmm. Yes. We ought to bring it in the wall to do that. <laughs> and we need to go through it sometime. Come by sometime, we'll go down to the water plant. And Take a look at what they're doing down there. 
but uh, hopefully cost will go down because it'll be a more efficient plant than what we've been operating. Um, the filters right now that they're working on, one of them should come back online next week. Uh, there are three three filters down there, which are great big, huge tanks. And um, they got one of them should be done today or tomorrow, and they'll come back online next week. But it should, we should be able to produce water cheaper than what we have been doing after the plant's refurbished. Is there an estimate on the timeline and the decrease in expenses that that might change to 55 and a half percent? Well, they haven't given any, any final number, any, you know, concrete number on what it's going to save us. They just keep saying it'll be a more efficient plant and, uh, But since we didn't figure in any de depreciation, <coughs> Could we not, once we get the extra from the more efficiency, could that not be put aside as our? I, I just don't know how much you're going to realize from it. Yeah, you know, I don't know what it's going to be. But that's assuming too you all adopt a 55 and a half percent increase. That's well, I don't think you can't adopt a 55 and a half percent increase if anything. <coughs> <you're gonna coughs> in over two or three years. I mean, that's... I just built a house, I'll maybe move. <laughs> <laughs> but if... Okay, so if we don't, what are we going to do? We can't continue to lose that much money. Our discussion last... at the last meeting was that we were going to start on this plan to redo all of this starting with our employee issue and moving towards the water issue because of the well you guys know so I think that instead of bouncing back and forth we need to decide are we sticking to that or are we gonna <laughs> are we are we you know going back on that and <coughs> developing a new plan or what is the deal because we're talking about this, but I'm I'm just trying to show you this is what what situation that we're in, you know, so yeah. that you can look and see why we are where we are. Well, whenever I asked about us um, purchasing water from the county before, um, what I was told was that wouldn't help us because the problem is in the lines and not with the treatment plant and that was originally what I was told and what I'm hearing now is no that's not the case so I'm wondering that was quality of water yeah probably not not uh, that had anything to do with cost though no but uh, the quality of the water has to do with the treatment plant am I wrong so most of it was those dead in lines wasn't it that was a lot of it. A lot of it is the, the problem in our tank. Um, so some of it was the water treatment plant, some of it was the lawns. But I didn't know yeah. anything about this contract that we were entered into that would keep us from purchasing water from the county. But the dead in lawns will be taken care of in that same project. Well, and we did, we did and and compare that ordinance that you all passed that prohibits any new dead end line, so hopefully you won't have any creation. Right. That's what Russell was doing in the second project. The water, we test water every quarter. And they test for a lot of different things. What we always have problems with are two things called mm -hmm. THN and HAA. But flushing the lines, if it's the dead end lines, flushing the lines should take yeah. care of that problem, right? The last test that we did is probably the best that we've had in a long time as far as, you know, being under the, the limits. I mean, the water quality that we're putting out is 
far exceeds what their minimum standard is. We're, we're, we're doing a good job of putting water out. By the time it gets though to the ends of these lines, or sits in the tank up there, the quality of the water has gone. Because of the chlorine. Not so much well, the chlorine, here. there's a lot of byproducts that come from just sitting still. The HAA, once it comes about, and the PHM comes about because of the water gets heated, and that creates a but we're going to stir it. We're doing that, right? Yeah. That's supposed to so that new water comes in and, and mixes with the older water. And that's all part of this contracted plan for improvement. That's one of the projects that we have. Okay. That's the third project. That's the one at the water tank. If I go back, <laughs> if I go back to the second one here, the, this is somebody who uses 7,900 gallons a month. That's that's pretty large use. <coughs> okay, their bill only goes up seventeen dollars and sixty six cents on a hundred fifty four dollar bill. Their bill they're paying now is one hundred fifty four eighty four. Right, they would pay $172.50. The next two are large water users. Uh, this one used 248,400 gallons. Okay, in a month's time, so this is a large user. Their bill went up from $3,300 to $3,800. Five hundred forty-seven dollars and eighty-nine cents. The other one is another large user. They use three hundred twenty-five thousand gallons in a month's time. Their bill went up seven hundred thirty-seven dollars from forty-four eighty-four to fifty-two twenty-two. That's if you go by the fifty-five and a half percent. You can't go by 55 and a half percent because that's going to kill everything. If you try to raise rates, it's going to have to be done two, three year period. You said you weren't going to recommend 55 percent. Yeah. Did you have something you wanted to recommend <laughs> that we could think about? I would say, if anything, I wouldn't go over 25 percent. <coughs> so we need a phased plan of increased water rates as we go through this process of citywide improvements on all of our processes. Then we need to develop a plan for a phased rate increase on our water. Yeah. Or you can just leave it like it is and keep borrowing money from somewhere else and paying Robin your Peter water Peter. shortage. Um, what Gerald, we're doing now? Where are you <laughs> <laughs>
So we have to do the best we can. We've modified it over the years and tried to make it a little more efficient. So George, if I just set that up in a straight proportion, I'm looking at a 25% increase would be four dollars and eighty-seven cents on this lowest bill. Did I set that up right? Well, it's probably going to be pretty close. Probably going to be a little less than half. Because I just said, I just, well, I just set it up in a proportion. Yeah. Um, Fifty-five percent over ten seventy-one, as opposed to twenty-five over X, and I got four eighty-six and some change, so forty-seven. Okay. Is that about sound right? Okay. Everything else is going to stay the same. Just that your school tax. Your school better. tax. Will just a tiny bit. Yeah, because the only increase you've had there is in the actual cost of water and your slag increasing your school tax. <coughs> the sewer and the garbage all stay the same. And you would be accepting $125,000 a year loss still. Do I know? If you do 25, well, it's going to be close to half. If you're losing 254 now, you'd be losing another 175. Just to clarify something for me, Lisa. That this the reason one of the reasons, maybe I'm wrong, that water does lose money is that you have to transfer water out you have to transfer money out of the water kind of a month on sewer. Is that right? No. Any longer. Not any longer. Okay. I do not do sanitation is stands on its own and sewer up until today has stood on its own. Up until today. I don't know about the spring rains and what that's going to be. You can look around in front of the agenda. <coughs> but it's 93,005. But it's standing on its own means that it's paying for the everything. wastewater. Everything. Okay. Everything has been standing on its own as far as sanitation is served. What about depreciation? Are you able to put aside any for that on mm -hmm. But But the general fund basically is what is having to, or, and the profit from sanitation is what is coming in to helping water each month. Does this account for the profit from sanitation, or is this a straight loss? Uh, this is revenue, not balance sheet. So when I transfer funds in, it's balance sheet. So that, uh, so, so that it does not include any extra. Well, this is literally straight numbers out of water. Is all yours. Well, you've heard me say every month I move around the twenty some thousand. Theoretically, every fund should stand on its own without any help from anything else, and I would completely agree with that. But if you're talking about you can't automatically implement a 55.5% increase on your people, then maybe you need to account for the fact that you've got to other revenue streams that help make sure you're solvent but at the same time. Well, I'm saying if you're thinking about 25, thinking half of the 55, then you also have to understand that you're still going to be, if everything else remained constant, which I know you've got other plans, but you're still going to be around one hundred and twenty five to hundred and fifty thousand in the whole the end of the first year. <coughs> if this is twenty five instead of fifty five, you agree? These are also based on last year's numbers. There are other expenses I think you've considered that are going to change. There's some expenses go down. Hall. There was no bill for like maintenance or anything like that. Is, is that being done yet? 
Now, uh, well, uh, but to kind of catch you all up, like some of these old, like the grandfathered in, and since the city sells its own water, if the city was using water, like City Hall was using water, there just wouldn't be a bill. So whether or not you have a leak here or if they're maintenance garage or something, you don't really know because there's never a bill or no way of knowing. And so that's automatically a loss to the water plan. It's not properly allocated to the different departments. So that may be one way that you can help reduce your expenses too to chip away at that 35%. I'm hoping that our water loss detection that we've got coming in would also uh, right now we're <coughs> losing about 20% of the water we lose. It can jump up to the high 30s in the summertime. I'm hoping that this new system will cut back that loss, which means we won't have to produce as much down here to plant will have less expense down there. Also, too, with the new lines and everything, we won't have to flush 300,000 a month like we've been doing, so that's that much that we'll be saving. So hopefully all this stuff kind of starts to come together after a while that if we can get a handle on our losses, then you know, it should help in the amount of time we have to run the plant, the amount of chemicals we have to use, the labor and everything else. Anything else? All right. Uh, no action required. We do have a discussion about So what she's saying is they'll do 
the meeting at no cost to the city, but there is a charge for the for KLC services and that. And I think it was like, and I'm guessing here, I think it was around twelve hundred dollars for her to do for them to do this for us. Um, I apologize for not having that number with us because I meant to enter a proposal for that tonight. But I guess we will have to wait and to either hold a special meeting for that or wait until our next um, meeting to actually decide whether or not we want to do that. I think that it's the smartest move. I think uh, if we want to do this and act quickly on it um, for a couple thousand dollars for all their services in four years, um, you know, in the future of, re, you know, taking another look at it, I think it's a, a good move and a smart move, especially considering where we are. Is that over a four-year time period? We just pay the one fee for four years? Yes. One fee, and they provide all those services. They meet with us. Um, we give them our suggestions. They can consider things like our, <laughs> our money situation, our employee situation together in deciding how to uh, revamp the um, employees compensation plans and benefits and things like that that we're none of us have you know done enough to say that we're experts at it so I think it's the smartest move considering where we are unfortunately I can't enter a motion for that right now can Sorry. you can you get your email on your phone and not my work email okay mm -hmm. discussion Anybody have any thoughts on that? Anybody disagree that that's a good idea? That's a lot cheaper than asking me to look into it, guys. I thought that you talked. For some reason, <laughs> I had 15 years in my house. It might be. For I mean, yeah. You know, but, it's a couple thousand dollars okay. one way or the other. Okay. I don't know. Um, can't remember for sure, but whatever it was, whenever I looked at it, I thought, yep, we need to do that. So it must not have been astronomical. <laughs> so, um, but I will get that to you guys and we'll, I guess we'll so, decide what to well, do with it then. Could we do this? Even if it was 400 for the four years, that's just $1,600. Could we make a motion that we use the service if it is not more than $1,600? Yes. You can make that yeah. and, and then if it is more than six, if it is more than that, we have to come back to the right. Okay. Well, yeah. then I make a motion for um, <coughs> us to use the services of KLC to up, to review and update our employee uh, policy personnel policies um, if it does not exceed the cost of sixteen hundred dollars. I second. Okay. Motion for plain sake discussion regarding the motion. We've already discussed a little bit. But Anybody have any more discussion regarding that? Hearing none, we'll vote. If you're in favor of this, up at the hand. Thank you, Mark Carey. Um, anybody else have any other new business to bring up? Any items for us to consider tonight? Um. You all have these um, <coughs> work process schedules for water treatment and um, the water treatment plant operator, and I think they both say that, but I think one of them is wastewater. Or did you just print one? No, it's not even wastewater. Um, it's all one, isn't it? Okay. Is it confusing? One, two. Yeah, um, this is the uh, the work process schedule for apprenticeships for Kentucky Apprenticeship Program for water treatment. Um, they also have a, an apprenticeable wastewater treatment, obviously, which looks almost the same, if not the same. And part of this may be that. Um, this is Kentucky. Yes. They the main? They probably copied it. Okay. <laughs> Double checking, we got the right they one. They probably copied okay. it. No, we got it straight from the Kentucky Labor okay. Cabinet, so um, they probably copied it, which is not typical. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Why reinvent the wheel? Um, but anyways, the uh, the 
coordinator for Kentucky Apprenticeships, um, for the registered apprenticeships, was going to be here tonight to discuss that possibility with us moving forward. Um, I think that we should probably, I, I mean, I, he was welcome to come as far as I was concerned, but I think we should probably start with the, the employee policies and take a look at this as an option moving forward if it's even conceivable for us. But. Explain the apprenticeship program. I know what you're talking about, but others might not understand. But okay, does sense. anybody not understand what an apprenticeship is? No, I'm, but we know what an apprenticeship is, but related to this. Yeah. Well, I mean, basically what, what our idea was, and, and actually Edwina's idea, was uh, that because we have um, an income issue, as far as the city goes, um, or a budgetary issue, I should say, and we need skilled labor in those areas, it might be a good idea for us to look at the option of staffing using the apprenticeship program as a feeder into those um, Kentucky positions. Kentucky started a program where they're encouraging people to, to uh, and they're trying to involve uh, businesses so that Students won't go to college and end up with a huge college expense bill. What they'll do is go directly to work at a company and will spend time there in the, as an apprentice, earning money, uh, but learning the trade. So <coughs> after a few years, whatever it takes to become qualified, certified in their field, then they will be able to work for that company. The company is basically trained them to do what they want. It's on the job training basically, but it's also classroom uh, structured. So they're getting their education and they are learning on the job at the same time. And the employer partners with the apprenticeship program because that helps with some of the expense. So once you call it an apprenticeship, there's requirements. These are the requirements that you have to meet. Um, and this is just one example. Every employer, which would be us in this situation, gets to tailor the program to their own needs. So um, we could say, you know, we want our uh, water treatment plant operator to have these skills. Uh, we want them to have this experience and this is the progressive wage that we're going to pay them um, as they move through this program. But Kentucky is um, pushing apprenticeship programs not just because they, they want to reduce the student debt, but because they want to increase the um, Kentucky skilled labor force. So it's a big push right now for that. And um, Steve Tressler, who is with the Labor Cabinet, um, is interested in working with us on that. He was going to be here tonight, couldn't come. He just wanted to talk to us and tell us basically what, what is possible. Not that, um, you know, this is just brainstorming, but um, he couldn't be here, but he is willing to come and talk to us about it in the future. What got me thinking about it was Pikeville, the city of Pikeville just did this to get some employees that they need. Um, and the state pays a portion. So it's like they would pay a portion of the salary of whoever we had in the program. There, there's um, definitely monetary incentive to take on an apprenticeship program. But I do welcome you guys and invite you all tomorrow. I know everybody's got their own thing going on. I didn't know until today that he was actually going to be um, at the Job Corps Center tomorrow speaking with our um, Davis County School Board administrators, um, but talking about the apprenticeship program. So if you're interested in learning more about apprenticeships as a whole, you're welcome to come at 11 a.m. tomorrow and we'll feed you lunch and you can sit through that meeting and mm -hmm. listen and check it out. Um, just you haven't got to see Job Corps. You see just Job Corps and find out what we're all about. Um, Bread food. food. <laughs> come on, <laughs> let her come. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I think it's, a, it's an option that we should look at. Well, and that's all. Explain your interest as job for personnel in this program, you know, because it initially did not involve job for did it? No, no, the apprenticeship programs, uh, and as of today, and I was in Frankfurt today with uh, the Labor Cabinet meeting about this very thing, um, which is why 
Um, I spoke to them about this while I was there today, but I was there for Job Corps, and what we're doing uh, right now, currently, with Muhlenberg Job Corps is the Kentucky Labor Cabinet is going to make the Muhlenberg Job Corps Center a, an apprenticeship sponsor. So our students, as they go through the Job Corps program that they're already doing, the work that they're already doing, it will count towards the apprenticeship, and they're going to be a pipeline feeder for the apprenticeship programs in, uh, that employers sponsor. So our welders can be perfect uh, feeders right, right into, into the apprenticeship mm -hmm. programs and already have the back end. They're already front loaded the hours of the classroom hours mm -hmm. of the apprenticeship program so that the employer isn't having to pay for that classroom education portion. Mm -hmm. They're already getting those hours on the back end for free, but we'll have to tailor our training to each of those employers who are who have the apprenticeship programs. The cool thing about that is for us, the awesome thing about that is for us, one, it's gonna be huge for us in recruiting because you know we've had problems recruiting quality students. I mean, everybody wants to send us troubled students. But if we have apprenticeship and the Secretary of Labor uh, saying, you know, this is quality education and this is your future if you come to Job Corps, Muhlenberg Job Corps in particular, then that, that'll help us hopefully with, make those partnerships with the high schools a little bit better because, you know, no matter how many times I say it, they're still sending us the dropouts and the, and the oh, this, this kid can't make it in high school, so here, <laughs> you know. Um, and that's fine, but that's not the, the kind of student that's going to, and I'm speaking in general terms, that's not the kind of student that's going to be largely successful um, leaving the program. And so we, what we need is committed adults who can handle the commitment of the learning process and the employment process afterwards. So um, it's going to be huge for us, and not only are they doing this for Muhlenberg, but we, we've started that ball rolling, which is really exciting, but they've already met with the National Director of Job Corps because they want to make this a nationwide thing. We're just going to be the we first to be and the pilot. Um, and all, all it took, literally all it took was we, we had a <coughs> meeting um, that we were invited to with the Workforce Board. We went, and whenever they were finished talking, you know, I was like, did you know that your Commonwealth has seven job core centers, the most in the United States, right under your nose, and everything you're talking about is we're, what we're already doing? The do Secretary of Labor did not know that. Do you only work with high school students? No. No. no 16 we, to 24. We, uh, seventy percent of college students are end up being dropping out of school. Um, so seventy percent of students who go into college drop out. So uh, that is a huge um, recruitment area for us. But the type of students that we are recruiting are not those seventy percent. It's not the ones who went to com some community college and right. you know did a semester here but got burnt out or whatever, and then decided they want to do some. That's not the type of students we're getting. We're getting the students who, uh, you know, have 10 felony charges and got them expunged <laughs> so that they could come to Job Corps, which is fine. I mean, you know, there's, we, know, we all know that there's a large incarceration rate, and those are, that's a good pool for skilled labor at some point, but uh, that's not, you know, going to help our, our um, perception around the world, you know, for people to know what job for what what we offer. Tomorrow so. you're going to see a lot of family resource center directors at the meeting also because uh, we've never recruited through elementary schools. We've always focused on high schools. Well, I got to thinking about it. You have somebody who had a child early. That kid is now probably in preschool, kindergarten, first grade, and their parents still fall under our age limit. Mm -hmm. So the family resource center directors are the first ones who hear people come in and say, I don't you know, I don't have a job, I'm a single parent, I can't take care, you know. And what job yeah. core offers for those people is we have um, help we can help them with cost of daycare. We can help them with child support costs. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking Ethan's but I think he just transportation. Just, well, I think he just turned twenty five in January. For the city of Hartford, now that you all don't have any program per se for water train, water plant operator, but there might be somebody who comes out of a of a program that would exactly. go into the water plant. But we can use a 
equipment operator right now, say in our distribution or exactly. department, you know, that would and that then apprentice need. them into the water treatment use plant. Use them up later. here half time, use them down to maintenance half time, something mm -hmm. like that. You're exactly you know, right. Yeah. Um, and our students might be a good pool for that, but aside from our students, just the apprenticeship program being involved mm -hmm. in it um, as a whole is something that I think all employers should be looking at because they don't care if you take one student every five years they will help you through that entire process if you are willing to create an apprenticeship they're they're willing to come and listen and I mean he tried to get a I just met with him today mentioned this today and he's like you are having a city council meeting tonight let me see if I can get travel uh, a travel waiver and come down there and I'll stay the night at Ref River come to the council meeting and come to Job Corps with you tomorrow I mean they are they're fine with going wherever talking to anybody at any time mm -hmm. he just found out about the meeting at job court tomorrow today because i mean it was short notice and he's like yeah i'm going to rearrange my schedule hang on just a second i'm coming to that tomorrow so they're willing if you're willing to talk about apprenticeships they're willing to come and talk to you so i think it's something that we should look at and i will uh let him if you guys want to i'll let him know when our next council meeting is and he will have that invite and come and speak to us about that possibility and like i said i think we need to focus on updating the policies and procedures but it can't hurt to to learn about it you know beforehand and this is a variety of skill sets that you do then there, there's over a thousand apprenticeable uh jobs so probably everything and anything that we can think of and so you don't have to pull. Is they come out with no <coughs> expense, you know, like going to college, you got that college loans to pay off. You don't have that in the friendship program. They actually right? come out with, with some money to, yeah. to well, get they well, they come out ahead. ahead that certification in order they to get, come yeah. out ahead and we come out ahead is the plan because we get some of the funding from the state for the apprenticeship program. Um, and the student doesn't have to, to have the debt that they would if they were on their own and, and not getting me on the job training. So, yeah. So, uh, so let's take a look at anything else that anybody wants to bring up under anything else anybody has. Uh, let me give you uh, some updates on things. Like I said, we've uh, lost one uh, operator down at the plant. I'll probably stay with it forever, but uh, to get a five, six dollar an hour raise and have the possibility of going up even more is hard to pass up. But he is going to try to help us out part time. So, you know, it's if we need somebody to cover them. Um, cemetery, we talked last time about uh, trying to contract somebody mowing the cemetery. We've got two bids, but the deadline's not until the next Thursday, so I expect some more to come in. We've had uh, some interest in it. Um, at the water plant, um, the Three filters, one of them has been completely rejuvenated and they're putting the, all the filtering element in it right now. And it should go back online sometime next week. And then once they get a, a check on the quality come out, then they'll be able to use it and take another, another one down. We've got a problem with uh, one of the others is deteriorated worse than they had initially thought and it's probably going to cost us another $49,000-$50,000. We had some contingency funds worked into the contract of $105,000, so we're still all right so far. Uh, we may have to ask for a little loan extension or get a little more money to pay for the third one, but it's not that we get much. The fire truck that we discussed at the last meeting has been ordered. Uh, it's, a, it's a basic truck uh, that uh, it's a ton truck that uh, is going to come in a little less than what they estimated uh, on our on sheet that we had last time. 
but uh, we're going to end up with a surplus truck from out there at the north uh, north department, and so uh, I don't know if it's going to be worth anything at all the way they talked about it. It was used when we bought it, and I don't mean used. But uh, I'm supposed to go to the fire department meeting next Tuesday at 10, so we, um, the funding is supposed to be taken care of, you know, if it's not going to cost us hardly anything for for them to get that truck. They're going to get it out of their state money. It's going to be kind of mangled around. Uh, Jimmy Smith is getting married Saturday. And I throw that out for uh, just information. If you're interested in going, it's out at the uh, New Assembly, 4 o'clock Saturday afternoon, and the reception's at 6.30 at New Assembly, I think. And then he's going to be off for a week, so. Did you say 4.30? 4 o'clock. Going to take him a week to recover? <laughs> uh, he's already been off two days this week. So <laughs> <laughs> he's married to Sarah Tom for a week or something. Oh, yeah. Okay. That explains <laughs> it right there. <laughs> so, anyway, I would throw it out for general information. I'm sure he would appreciate anybody who showed up at his wedding. So. Anybody else have any other information? No, no, I didn't have a motion to adjourn. It, uh, did we decide on a, a time for our meetings? We haven't. That's thank you for bringing that up. Uh, <coughs> we had, well, we were waiting to decide for you to be here to talk about time, but uh, now Tony's not here, so. Uh, <coughs> Tony wants it as late as we can do it. Yeah, Tony, <laughs> Tony always talked to me. He liked to. <coughs> Five o'clock work for him. He likes that. Uh, five o'clock. Five, five thirty or something. Mm -hmm. What time can you be here? Five's fine with me. All right, then I'll, I'll go with five. Four just kind of pushes <laughs> it. Did you need? No, what? Yeah. Five o'clock. I can, I mean, it would be. <laughs> Better for five thirty. It would be easier for me, just little old me, five thirty, but I, I can be here at five. I mean, I've. It hasn't been a problem so far unless, I, you know, today I was in Frankfurt. I still made it back here by 3.30. I think that my boss has not said a word about it, so I think that I'm okay. If you guys want to stick with 5 or if it's a problem, do 5.30. If it's not, I'd love to do 5.30. So I'll leave the rest well, I make a motion that we change our meeting time from 4.30 to 5 o'clock. Fourth Thursday of the month. I'll second that. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? All right. So we're just doing Thursdays now. Yeah, I mean, once, once a month. month. Once, once a month. One, once a month. Fourth mm -hmm. Thursday. Five George is so efficient, and he's got everything running so smooth. The fourth Thursday. He doesn't need but once a month to straighten us out. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Days in between the kill. <laughs> you gonna limit our phone calls? Is that gonna be the next thing? Uh, all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make a motion that the meeting adjourn. Second. I'll second it. All right. Discussion. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Got you out here before dark. Thank you. <laughs>